Hi friends, it is a beautiful and absolutely wet spring day and today we are going to be getting our green stalks prepped and planted for the spring. I have these new green stalk trellises and we're going to try a few things on these trellises. I am very excited about this. So we'll set these up, we'll get some compost in these, we'll get them planted and ready to go. And this is really our first big outside spring project. Look at the sun. Oh. <laughs> I am beyond excited to be outside in the dirt again. So if you've never seen a green stalk before, these are amazing. They're vertical planters and you just water them through the top. Last year we had a really tough garden year. It was really rainy initially and flooding everything and then immediately, right after all of that, there was just extreme drought and heat, like 114 degree temperature and all of those things. And it made it really difficult for the big garden. But these green stalks really produced in those initial months more than my whole 4,000 square foot garden, which was enormously wonderful. Now eventually towards August, if you saw some of our videos, our garden did start to produce once the weather cooled off a little, but these guys were our salvation last year as far as the garden was concerned. We grew greens in them, we grew peppers in them, we grew squash in them, we grew okra in them, we grew all sorts of things in them. Um, there is, this one is the regular green stock and it's got deeper pockets and this is the green stock leaf. I grew green beans in this, I grew uh, um, greens in this also. I'm going to plant this big one with the deep trays with peas and carrots and then this one is going to be greens again for the spring and I have some greens. Some of you guys were planting those with me earlier. They're growing in my garage so we'll bring them out and then once the summer hits and it gets really warm I'll change this out to green beans or something and then we'll see. I'll probably do peppers again in here or some of the um, griller squash but that'll be fun. If you, if you have suggestions for what to plant in the warm summer months, let me know. What do you love growing in them or what do you think would be fun to try? And I'll definitely give it a thought or give it a try. Um, but first things first, we need to clear this out. As you can see, my peppers are still in here and some of my squash. I did pull out the okra trees that were stuck in here, but let's get this cleaned out. All right, now I have everything out of here, and I don't know if you could see when I was pulling those peppers out, some of them had super deep roots. It just goes to show you, like especially when I pulled the okra out and stuff earlier, it really, this really develops huge root systems, really strong plants. I adore these. <laughs> And by the way, just as a side note, I'll be sure to put my affiliate link for the green stocks in the comments because you can get a $10 coupon if you click on and use my affiliate link. Sometimes like uh, right now, if you're watching this when I'm recording, um, they have a big spring sale going on. They'll have a big Mother's Day sale. They have Black Friday sales. And if you use that affiliate link and get that $10 off with the sale, then it makes it really reasonable. Um, for the value that you're getting. They're super well built, but um, I'll be sure to link that down below. The next thing we're going to do is we want to top these off. Because you put potting soil in these, you need to make sure, A, that you have potting soil that's going to retain moisture well, not just dirt. And B, you want to make sure that you keep these fed. Even if you use a good quality potting soil, year after year the nutrients are going to kind of leave the soil. They're going to get sucked up into whatever plants you plant. So you want to make sure you're getting keeping these well fed. Um, I use Osmocote once or twice during the season and then today at the start of a new season what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top off each tray um, with compost because throughout the season there'll be some erosion when you pull plants some of the dirt will leave so there's always room to top these off and a good quality compost is gonna put some of those nutrients back in the soil so let's go ahead and let's top these guys off with some compost
Now we've cleaned all these out. We've topped them off with some compost so they're nutrient filled. Before I start planting though, it is much easier to water now. I want all the soil moist and while throughout the season you're gonna water just through the top, here I'm gonna go ahead and wet the tops of these really thoroughly and then fill them up and just make sure the water is fully saturated make sure even wet all of these are still topped off as the water gets in them they might settle a little and I can level them off and then we'll plant but it's way easier to do all of those things before you start to plant that way you don't dislodge any of the seeds or disturb the soil and it's way easier to plant the the um, the little seedlings if you're putting them in will have a lot more access to water right early on which is when they really need it to root in so we're going to go ahead and we are going to get these wet and when you water from the top the way you can tell that it's fully saturated all the way through is when you see a little stream of water coming out of the bottom so when you're watering throughout the season, you want to make sure you're watering until it's all moist and the water's coming out the bottom. And I can see that right here, right now. All right, now for the fun part, we get to plant these things. I'm going to start with this big one and we're going to plant the peas and carrots. And Greenstalk has these really cool charts. Uh, if you've watched me long enough, you know I make a chart for everything, but they make these really super helpful charts, if you can see, where they show you in what pocket and you can just fill out what you're doing. That way you don't have to fool with labeling here because, you know, if you've been gardening a while, you know, a couple of things happen if you label in the garden, unless you have a foolproof method. Um, sometimes the words fade and you can't see what it is a few weeks later. Sometimes the little markers fly off, like all sorts of stuff happens and then you just have mystery plants. I like doing it this way. That way I have access to it all the time. Even when I'm inside, I know what I've planted outside. I can keep track. Um, that's just my type A personality, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I love having charts like this. It just makes my life so much easier. And what I'm going to do in each of these little pockets is I'm going to plant three peas spaced out and then carrots in between those peas. And that's going to really allow me to use the full space in each pocket because the carrots, right, are going to grow down. The peas are going to go up and grow on the trellises we're going to put on today. And I have a different type of peas and carrots on each little level. For those of you interested in types of carrots, I've got on the top a King Tut pea and an Uzbek Golden carrot. I haven't tried the Uzbek Goldens. They were a freed seed from Baker's Creek, so we will see how they go. On the second level, I have a Sugar Daddy pea and a Parisian carrot, then Mr. Big pea and Kyoto Red carrot, um, Oregon Sugar Pod pea and Scarlet Mantis carrots, and then on the very bottom, I've got the Lincoln pea and an Oxheart carrot. Now, I have not attempted to grow English peas like this um, in Oklahoma. <laughs> so I'm hoping they do well. I love peas. Uh, if there's anywhere they can do well, it's the green stalk. Um, I'm a little concerned that it might get too hot too fast for them, but we'll see. This is a grand experiment. I have grown carrots, but I've not grown them in the green stalk. So this will also be another experiment for that. Now, I should mention that I'm direct seeding this green stalk, the peas and the carrots. So a general rule of thumb is you want to plant as deep as the seed is big. So for like a seed that's a quarter of an inch, you want to plant it a quarter of an inch under the soil. For bigger seeds, they go down further. For teeny tiny seeds, like a carrot seed, I'm not even really going to bury it. I'm just going to kind of set it and then kind of wipe some dirt over top because what happens if you plant a carrot seed too far down and it starts to germinate, it just can't make it to the top. So let's go ahead and let's plant all those. Now I have three of these green stock trellises that we're going to trellis up. Everything's planted in here, but we need to get these up before the peas start to come over so that we can trellis. Now here's the cool part. I don't need a trellis on every single one of these. I got a pack of three trellises. So we're going to kind of put them in the middle to where um, we can pull some down and we can pull some up and there'll be plenty of trellis space. 
So it comes with this neat little bag and there are several of these big trellis parts and these little ones. Now the first step is going to be taking these and kind of putting them in between here and hooking them onto the pots. And they just snap right on like that. So it's super duper easy. So let's go all the way around and let's get these snapped on the pots. I don't know if you can see me slip sliding through the mud puddle that is our yard right now. It has been a crazy rainy. Um, <laughs> so now we have six of these longer pieces and these are gonna go around. And it looks like they just fit right in. There's a little hole, a little divot, and this part fits right into that little divot and snaps. That's easy. And then this next part has a little piece that goes right into this one. So this fits into the divot and this fits right and snaps nice and neat right there. And it makes this nice little trellis. Let's get all these around. All right, that is one tier done. Let's do the other two tiers and then we'll talk about how this actually feels. <laughs> Okay, now that I have these set up, let's talk about them for a minute. I honestly almost didn't buy these. I, I came real close to just kind of doing my own makeshift trellis type thing, which if you search on YouTube, if you search on Pinterest or even the Greenstock um, group on Facebook, you'll see a ton of options. And these for a set of three were about $60. I got them on sales. So they were slightly less than that. And Greenstock does have good sales throughout the year. And you can use my affiliate code to get an extra $10 off, but it's, it was hard to spend $60 on trellises like this. But I will say this, they are sturdy. They were incredibly easy to just snap in and go. Um, and they're gonna last. They're made of the same material, it feels like, as the actual green stock. And if you have a green stock, you know how sturdy these are. And they have that warranty that for five years, if any of your stuff cracks or fades or gives you problems, they will replace it. So it's really worth it. And I kind of am in love with these. I can't wait to see how they do. But I could easily see how you could put some really sturdy things in here. I've seen some people grow tomatoes and stuff and just use these trellises. But we will see. I am confident they'll hold up to our peas really well. So it'll be fun to see how they do and how they hold up. All right, now we've got this guy and we are gonna plant some leafy greens in this one. Now, once again, for the second planter, I have one of these charts and I will link this down below. So in this one, if you're interested in varieties, I'll go through what varieties I'm planting in here. Some of them are started. My spinach, I'm direct sowing. But everything else is started in these little pods over here and ready to go in. If you're new to transplanting the seedlings you started inside outside, here's something to consider. It's really easy for baby seedlings like this, if you bring them outside and stick them in a pot or stick them in the garden, for them to just die. They're not used to the direct sunlight. They're not used to the crazy wind, especially here in Oklahoma in the spring. They're gonna get whipped around. So you need to do what's called hardening off when you take them outside. Um, and that is just over the course of a week or so, the first day you'll bring them out to like an hour maybe, and you'll let them have access to the sun and you'll let them just kind of get in the wind a little bit and then you bring them inside and you make sure they're really well watered because getting whipped around by the wind the extra sun is going to cause more transpiration right they sweat <laughs> um, and so what you're going to do is the next day bring them out for two hours and then the next day three hours and you do that a little bit at a time lengthening the time they're outside until they're outside for the full daylight cycle and they're doing well and then you know it's time and they can hold up to being outside in the elements so don't skip that step sometimes it's so exciting to just pull them outside but 
it really is important and it really makes a difference to the overall health of your plants and if you have been having trouble just you've tried to plant seeds inside and it just never works maybe that's why because when you buy plants at a nursery they come pre-hardened off <laughs> they're already ready for you just to put them in the ground but little bitty babies that you plant inside they really need to kind of build up to that all right so let's walk through what is in my different tiers this top tier is going to be lettuce it's going to be new fire red lettuce ruby red lettuce summer bib royal oak leaf lettuce grandma hadley's lettuce um, cimarron lettuce then on the next tier we're going to have lettuce and kale um, I've got some more red romaine lettuce, some butter crunch lettuce, freckles lettuce, which is my personal favorite, uh, Paris Island lettuce, and then I have red Russian kale and blue curled scotch kale. Then the third tier, here's the third tier, the third tier is going to be spinach. We're going to have red Malabar spinach, Chinese multicolor spinach, Bloomsdale spinach, giant noble spinach, Galilee spinach. America spinach and then down below that we're going to have our chard and some lettuce um, ruby red chard bright light chard pink chard fold brook chard and then black seeded simpson lettuce and merlot lettuce down on the next tier we've got our brassicas we're going to have amazing cauliflower calabrese broccoli in two of the pots, Waltham broccoli and Yod Fa Chinese broccoli. So um, that's gonna be wonderful. Then in the next one, we're gonna have some, some exotic brassicas. Um, these I got from Baker Creek and they did so well in our heat last year that even sometimes if, if I dropped a seed outside, there would be huge things growing. And some of them were super cold hardy too. Like one of them we had growing, um, all the way through uh, until we got down to like, I don't know, below zero, which hardly ever happens here. Um, it was it was rocking and rolling. But forgive me if I mispronounce some of these because they're kind of tricky, but we have Tatsoi, and then we have Chijimi Nisai, and we have Beni Husa. Then on the bottom, I just have um, a row of miscellaneous on the bottom. I'm gonna have slow bolt arugula, um, rocket arugula, Pink Beauty Amaranth, Purple Lady Bok Choy, Cho Choi Sum Bok Choy, and Hey Do Tiny Bok Choy. Um, I love having a huge variety of especially salad greens because you can come out, A, some of it will do well here and some of it won't and some of it will be quick growing and some of it will be slow growing and so you get a good variety so that when you're ready to come pick a salad you can just cut it off and we've got several months to go until the really hot weather sets in and when the really hot weather sets in it'll turn pretty bitter and then we'll pull it out but until then we'll have a wonderful green stock full of salad greens that we can just come out cut off and I made sure most of these are cut and come again so so these lettuces you can just snip some off bring it in wash it and eat it right then so this is I love having the um, the green stock full of salad greens it's fantastic so let's go ahead and we're gonna plant that with some of our already planted and like I said the spinaches I'm gonna plant from seed but the rest is going to be from the ones that we planted earlier a few weeks ago and I'll also say this with your transplants you want to make sure to plant them forward in the pot because especially down here they're going to be shaded if you tuck them up in here you want them to be able to reach for the sunlight and they'll fill back now we are all planted with beautiful greens looky here and i cannot wait to chomp on some of these. They're gonna be delicious. All right, so I have two big, beautiful green stalks planted and ready to go for the upcoming spring. I am so excited to finally get things planted outside. I should be able to harvest lettuce in just a few weeks. The peas will take a little, peas and carrots will take a little longer, but still, it's not gonna be long and I'm gonna be able to be bringing things in from the garden to the table. It's the best time of year. I know I dote a lot on my green stalks 
it, I, last year was my first year to try green stocks and I just have been so impressed by the quality, by the amount of food you can grow in a teeny tiny little space. It's just really great. So I will put that discount code in the um, description here so that you can take advantage of this. These are great. This would be great for an apartment. Really, like I would love to have a whole entire army, like 80 green stalks and you could have your whole garden be green stalks. Man, it would be, <laughs> it would be easy and you wouldn't have to weed, but um, <laughs> so this is just the beginning of our gardening season. It is going to be a fantastic year. I can already tell. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be putting stuff out in the real, the massive garden. That is not too far off at all. And I hope that you will stick around and join us for that. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. You'll be able to see all of our updates of our little family and our homesteading journey. Thank you so much for joining us.